Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. Glad to have you back. Uh, for those that are new, welcome. You have arrived at the most obscure and irrelevant uh, Land Cruiser related channel on all of YouTube. So happy to have you here. What we do uh, on this channel, among other things, is we review listings uh, for Land Cruisers, specifically 80, 100, and 200 series Land Cruisers that have been recently listed on Bring a Trailer or Cars and Bids or elsewhere, and go through them, see if we can find anything, you know, glaring or anything that maybe potential buyers should be cautious of and try and bring those uh, to people's attention. And sometimes there isn't any, and it's just enjoying some of these uh, yeah, great looking trucks. All right. What we're going to cover today is a 1996 Toyota Land Cruiser FZG80. Um, this one's actually coming from a seller that sold um, a green kind of built out 80 series uh, just last week for, uh, for 47 ish thousand dollars. So yeah, it's good to see another one from them. Um, yeah, so let's go through the high-level details on this. So this has uh, 241,000 miles. Uh, it's got the three locking differentials, white paint, uh, leather upholstery. It looks like it's got a, you know, just by looking at the pictures, a pretty big lift, stated at three and a half inches. ARB front bumper and a winch, uh, aftermarket stereo. It's got some driving lights and some aftermarket headlights and service records. Um, so yeah, pretty good looking truck, at least from the front. Uh, we'll go through yeah, the details here in a little bit. Let's just see if there's anything else from the listing that jumps out at our attention. Uh, it says the current owner acquired the truck in 2021. Um, depending on when that was, yeah, they might have paid a <laughs> pretty big price. And uh, approximately 10,000 of the 240,000 miles were from that uh, ownership. Looks like there's been some re ma recent maintenance as well. Uh, resealing the oil pan, which, yeah, this mileage, it's a very common thing. Cleaning the fuel injectors, that's a nice touch. Uh, replacing the alternator, battery belts, sway bar bushings, carpets, kind of unusual. Uh, radiator cap and hoses and heater control valves and hoses. So those are all very common things for this age. Uh, carpets maybe being a little weird. And then, yeah, nice touch on the oil pan and the full fuel injectors. Uh, yeah. So it's being offered on dealer consignment uh, with a clean Florida title. Uh, let's see, going through, looks like it's been refinished. Okay, so it has been repainted. Um, anything out of the ordinary here? Uh, talk about the ARB bumper, the depot headlights. Those are kind of like the, the go-to, you know, aftermarket headlight for these. And um, let's see, Carfax report shows accident damage affecting the rear of the truck in August of 2013 with no additional information. And then some additional work. Let's see, we've got fuel filler cap, rear, em rear emblems, and hood and tailgate struts. Again, all very common things, uh, yeah, for this age. Um Got some aftermarket, well, I don't know if they're aftermarket, but they, um, yeah, it looks like some, you know, Toyota steel wheels um, with some big 35-inch 35 tires on there, and then, yeah, big big lift kit. Um, brake components in the front and rear sway bar bushings are all said to have been replaced in 2022. Uh, let's see, bucket seats. Um I think down in the comments it says, oh yeah, so right here. So the selling dealer reports the carpets were replaced in 2021 and the front seat power operations do not work properly. Uh, yeah, so kind of a common thing. And it looks like just in this photo, the little um, switch cover is missing. Okay, and yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, yeah, all of that was stated up above. Uh, truck is equipped with locking differentials. Oh, and it's, so it's been re-geared to accommodate those larger tires. And the sailing dealer reports that the underside has been treated with a POR15 undercoating. So let's take a look at the Carfax. Uh, so yeah, it does show the accident. Uh, we've got four previous owners. Uh, let's see where this thing spent its life. So it looks like 21-ish years in Tennessee. And then um, the person that bought it, you know, about a year ago or in 2021, uh, yeah, they were in Florida. And then let's take a quick scan uh, through the odometer readings, make sure everything makes sense. That's yeah, a pretty good chunk of mileage there between the <laughs> October of 96 and November of 98. Um, yeah, let's see, 25 or yeah, 35,000 miles. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of use. Um, looks like it climbs pretty steadily. And yeah, last odometer reading at 196,000 miles when it went and left Tennessee. Well, no, these are still in Tennessee. And then, yeah, the accident happened in 2013. Damage to rear, functional damage reported. I wonder what that could be. Um, and then airbags did not deploy. All right, and then it came to Florida. No other um, yeah, odometer readings here. All right, so 
you know, we know it's been repainted. Uh, so let's keep an eye on that. Let's also keep an eye on the, um, yeah, the accident or not the accident history, but yeah, the, the repaint quality and then see if there's any damage that we can see, um, you know, on that rear. Okay. Let's jump into the photos. Um, yeah, so looking good from the front end. Um, yeah, I like the look of those ARB bumpers. I, I think I like the Slee uh, short bus bumper a little bit more, but yeah, that's a good look. And yeah, these tires look good. I'd, I'd love to see them. I don't know if the 12 and a half inch tire, you know, constitutes a, a skinny or a, you know, like a pizza cutter. Yeah, I'd love to see skinnies on this. <laughs> um, my, my personal preference, but yeah. Um, yeah, let's see if anything jumps out of this again, keep in mind, you know, this has been repainted, so we want to look for signs of that. Um, yeah, nothing jumping out at me. This, um, this panel gap seems a little big. Uh, we'll keep that in mind as we look to the other side. Yeah. Paint looks decently good. A little, little bulge, little bump on the driver's side. Um, yeah, rear kind of bumper on the side, but yeah, it looks like those were repainted as well. Yeah, moving around here to the passenger side on the back. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing jumping out at me. Yeah, at least from this angle, that gap between the fender and the door, yeah, it looks about the same. So maybe, maybe there's nothing, nothing going on there. Although, yeah, something that doesn't look quite right. All right, so we'll keep those in mind. Um, one thing jumping out at me, I mentioned in another video, this lower valence is extremely flimsy. Uh, I can see it pulling away here a little bit. Not sure, you know, what, what might have caused that. Could have just been from, you know, somebody taking it on and putting it back or taking it off and putting it back on and causing some sort of damage. But yeah, that should be tucked up into that corner. You, you can kind of see it here on the other side and it looks like it's tight. Uh, yeah, just, you know, look for looking for indicators of, of damage and things that don't quite, you know, make sense and line up. Um, you know, seeing the thinking back to the, you know, the rear damage uh, that was reported on the Carfax, uh, I do see a sticker here. Uh, so maybe the tailgate, you know, either was, you know, unscathed or, um, you know, wasn't significant enough that they replaced it. Uh, and I, I can't remember where, I think it's on the sides where the VIN sticker is for the, for the lower tailgate. Um, but yeah, if you were, you know, interested in this, I'd definitely check and look for that. And then, yeah, just kind of confirmation. You can see on that front valence panel, that panel that it's, yeah, it's pulling away there. Hood's sitting up a little high. Um, yeah, not, you know, not a huge deal. I feel like maybe there's a little dent in this rocker. Um, yeah, it looks like it's been pushed in just a little bit. But otherwise, it looks like all the yeah you know, the paint was seemingly done at the same time. But yeah, from this angle, this gap looks looks huge. <laughs> and yeah, that's it to and to me at least my eyes. That's confirmation that this yeah you know, this was a painted over dent. Um, another indication of the like the level or the quality of the paint job. Um, this little fastener, I guess you'd call it. So this is like kind of like an acts like a nut, um, to hold the, I don't know, the piece of plastic that ties into the running boards. Um, yeah, that was painted Again, not a big deal, just an indicator of to what level they went on the, on the paint job. But as we mentioned in other videos, you know, it does look like the, um, you know, the door handles were pulled out, um, you know, in order to do this, this looks weird, but I don't know. It's probably nothing. All right, moving around to the back uh, and over to the side. <laughs> These photos are kind of all over the place. Sometimes the yeah, the photos do a really good job of yeah going. Wait a minute. I was gonna say I'll I'll find something I want to talk about. Uh, so the photos sometimes yeah do a good job of kind of going all around the vehicle. Looks like in this case they. Um, Yeah, so it looks like in this case, they kind of went like low around the vehicle and then kind of like coming back around up top. But that's when I saw this. So this masking, the transition and the angle here, you know you're a Land Cruiser nerd when this catches your attention, <laughs> but this doesn't look right. So yeah, when I first saw it, I thought, oh yeah, that 
for some reason that doesn't look right. And yeah, there's a couple sources you could go to to verify whether or not, you know, that masking job that they did on the paint, you know, is correct. So a good one would be the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum. Sometimes their photos aren't the highest quality, um, but like in this example, it feels and it looks like this curves a little bit more um, aggressively and the rain gutter, you know, it, it kind of cuts under the rain gutter. Um, so then pulling up a couple, or a couple other vehicles um, that have been listed here on Bring a Trailer, you can see that that is the case on this one. And then, you know, let's, let's find another example. And you can see again, um, you know, that black, you know, undercuts that rain gutter. Uh, so then when you come back to this vehicle, you can see that it doesn't do that. So the masking job was, yeah, was done or the repaint. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't done to kind of have that match the original factory paint. Not a big deal, but just something that like a Land Cruiser nerd and somebody who obsesses about these a little too much <laughs> would, would catch. All right, moving around the back. Okay, moving around the back. Um, yep, nothing nothing really shouting at me here. You can see that wave in that bumper corner on the driver's side. Yeah, that rear, um, yeah, the rear bumper looks good. Yeah, so similar to the driver's side, on the passenger side, this interaction... Um, not quite sure what's going on, but this interaction, um, you know, this little vent cover with the masking and it, it looks like there's like tape that's still up there. Uh, yeah, it's not the way that Toyota had it. Uh, you know, just not a big deal. It just takes away from the value of the vehicle a little bit and helps you figure out how much you want to, how much you want to spend. Yes. So this matches pretty well to the other side. Um, I am seeing, you know, something that I saw earlier that's not, not concerning, but this, the line here doesn't look like it matches quite right. Um, yeah, it's like the door, the, the passenger front door kind of comes in a little, a little tighter to the body, uh, whereas the fender sticks out. Um, yeah, not, not sure. So I'm going to, as we go through the rest of these, I'm going to kind of keep that in mind and you know see again there's a repaint we should see lots of in stickers assuming that body panels hadn't been uh replaced uh, but yeah just something to something to tag for later but looking at this photo you can see yeah it doesn't quite look right but otherwise yeah it seems like a pretty decent yeah paint job but yeah there could be some other some other damage Masking doesn't look great there, but you know, small, small beans. All right. So yeah, the winch looks like a, yeah, Badlands winch with synthetic cable. All right. Yeah. The good looking wheels, they're finished. Um, yeah, they look nice. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Moving to the interior. We mentioned this before. Uh, yeah, these are supposed to all be tucked in. So it's evidence that the door panel has been off, uh, that wasn't put back, you know, or they missed that. Um, who knows why it got taken off. Could be to replace the speaker, could be to replace the door lock actuator, could be to regrease the window. Um, you know, those are things that if you saw this and there was nothing else going on in the vehicle, you know, you'd ask, Oh, you know, like, did you ever take this off <laughs> and why? Um, you know, just help again, it helps you, you know, price in the vehicle. Um, we mentioned the missing switch cover before I do see what appears to be a little bit of a rust here at the bottom of the a pillar. You know, if, if there really is rust there, that should be something that the, um, yeah, the selling, uh, individual, the dealer in this case, uh, yeah, has a detailed photo of, um, yeah, I'd really expect that to be shown. Little light light sun fade on the on the belt buckle receiver. Yep, definitely some rust there. Um, yeah, I don't think that there's a um, yeah detail photo. So kind of sh shame on them. Uh, I do see. 
yeah, I don't recall seeing, I didn't actually see this before when I first went through these photos. Um, but yeah, this is something that should definitely get a, um, a detail photo from, yeah, from the seller, but it, you know, it's good to see again, keep an eye on the, the VIN tags. It's good to see those there. Uh, I don't see one on this side. Um, but if it's in the same spot, Yeah, so when I first went through these photos, I didn't see this rust. Um, there isn't a detail photo. That's something that the selling dealer really should, um, yeah, should provide. You would hate to buy this and, you know, that's going to jump out at you. That's really going to get your attention. Um, but yeah, just take note of the VIN sticker there. Um, it's good to see those there. Uh, same thing, these little tabs are, you know, pushed out and a little bit of damage here at the top of the door panel. But nothing, nothing else. Nothing else on the store jumping out at me. The leather on the seat, it's not a, you know, a good match, but I'm sure it's better than it being all cracked. <laughs> um, all right, looking here under the dash, I, I think this is the fan. Uh, it looks like it has a duct tape on it. Not sure when or why that was done. And then, yeah, seeing consistent sun damage on the, uh, on the seat belt receptacle and the missing switch cover. Carpets look okay as they should they're new and that seems like a decent color match to be honest yeah dirty blurry detail photo nice <laughs> yeah i don't know what's going on with that duct tape that's yeah that's weird um hmm. the steering wheel cover i i remember in the notes that yeah i mentioned the stitching's coming loose it looks like it was recovered and looks like a decent match. Um, yeah, if it's like a, you know, a synthetic thread, yeah, I'd put a little, little lighter to it and yeah, burn that off, <laughs> make it, make it look nice. But who knows what they used, but yeah, it looks like it's yeah, a decent job. And yeah, it's got the, the triple locker switch. Well, technically it's just the two locker switch. <laughs> All right. 240,000 miles. Um, yeah. So th this is the same deal with the shifter that I saw in that other, uh, the green one, it's, it's like they're taking off the leather and just calling it good because the, there's two variants, at least in the U S market that I'm aware of for these shift handles, shifter handles. So the, um, the poverty pack one or the cloth interior one, um, it looks more or less like this, but it's not smooth. It's got a little texture to it. Very similar to what you would expect, you know, like in this material here or on the steering wheel, you know, it's got a little bit of texture. Um, and I remember this because when I took off the leather off of, I think it was the shifter on my 94, um, uh, it was similar. It was, it was smooth. However, the difference was like the 94, I think this plastic right here was, um, was white. So you couldn't really get away with it, but it's very possible that they like painted it. I don't, I don't know in order to get around, um, you know, having to be leather, not a big deal, but just know like this material wasn't ever meant to be, you know, touched and handled every day. Maybe it would be fine, but that's, yeah, that's not how, you know, Toyota had it. Um, there's two hazard switches. I'd assume one of them is for the center diff lock. Um, you know, that switch that has the center differential lock, like image and icon on it, that's readily available. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd switch that out because you know, you want to, you don't know which one's which and that seems kind of silly. At least, you know, like use a marker or something. <laughs> yeah. There's that duct tape. Yeah. Who knows what's going on there? Yeah, so I I dare somebody to ask on the uh, on the bring a trailer thread or you know like in the comments on the listing. Yeah, ask what that duct tape or whatever whatever that's for. Figure out what that is. Yeah, otherwise, yes, yeah, seems like it. Yeah, it all looks okay. The interior is pretty clean. I think most people would be pretty happy with it. I mean, there's, it's kind of being nitpicky. Uh, and then looking at the difference in photo or in the, in the color between the aftermarket, uh, leather and the factory leather, you know, just a little, little shade difference. All right, so here's the um, yeah the aftermarket carpet. Uh, I can't remember how this looks on the original carpet, but 
Yeah, it looks reasonably reasonably good, and it's going to be under a floor mat anyway, so who cares? But yeah, and there's hopefully our last view of that duct tape. Nope, the duct tape's back. <laughs> Right, we got it. The new the new carpets are new and clean. Looks good. Uh, moving to the back. Yeah, you know, so this is interesting. I didn't notice this before. I wonder if this ever had a third row. Um, you would expect to see yeah the the bolt uh, yeah holes up here in the in this D pillar. Also, there should be like a little gap for the seatbelt to come through. Uh, I it's not jumping out at me. I'd really be surprised if this didn't have the third row. It looks like it did at some point um, because there's yeah the sticker here. It's got the grab handles that are missing the little covers uh, for the screws. Uh, so yeah, I'm curious how, you know, so under here there are bolt holes. I wonder how they covered them up. Um, for the seat belt, I believe it mounts like right here and it actually goes all the way through the floor. So I wonder how that was um, yeah covered up. Yeah, so that way you don't, you know, have dirt and mud, you know, coming up into that carpet. Okay, moving to the engine bay. Um, yeah, first thing that jumps out at me, just like as a reminder, you remember we were talking about this front fender and how it, you know, like where it interacts with the, the passenger door didn't look quite right. Um, it does feel a little lighter, but more importantly, I can see on the driver's side, I can see the VIN sticker. However, I don't see a matching VIN sticker on the passenger side. Um so I think something's happened here. Um, it's obviously not disclosed on the Carfax report. It's not disclosed in the listing. Um, you know, given that the current owner, you know, hasn't owned it since 2021, they may not know as well. But um, yeah, just another thing to de that detracts from the value. Uh, really minor thing, but yeah, some of the plastics, you'd imagine all the plastics on a vehicle this age would be pretty brittle, but yeah, it looks like this thing got a little, uh, yeah, over, over tightened and, and cracked. Yeah, looking at the engine bay, it looks, looks clean, not seeing, you know, leaks from the common things, even though it's not specifically mentioned. Um, you know, these head gasket, or not head gaskets, the valve cover gasket can leak, distributor O-ring can leak. Um, don't even really see, usually it's further down, you know, on this on the power steering hoses, but yeah, those look good as well. Radiator, radiator looks good, and it looks like there's some sort of, yeah, foam or something to keep the air where it should. And then, yeah, remember in the listing, it talked about how some of these hoses in this bypass valve were replaced. I do see a little, um, this insulation has been chewed up. Um, that could be due to rodents. It could be, maybe there was, you know, some work that I don't know what somebody would ever do down in that corner, but, um, you know, yeah, who knows? Um, it should all be black and shouldn't be chopped up like that. Um, let's see. So what, what aftermarket wiring things do they have, they have the lights that in the, in the winch that could be what all of this is for. So you'd want to check out how that was wired. All right. Yeah, that all looks good. Um, moving to the undercarriage. Uh, like this isn't a, isn't a great shot. Uh, so this is the rear differential. Um, this is where you would expect the undercarriage corrosion to be yeah, the, the worst. So you can tell that it has been, you know, either treated or painted with something as was admitted in the listing. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty crusty. Um, for Tennessee, I'd say that's probably about normal. Uh, what is a little concerning is looking at the, you know, the bottom of the body. Um, this could just be kind of dirt and kind of just muck that's up there, uh, but it doesn't look great. The coloring also indicates something that, yeah, isn't, isn't great, but um, yeah, maybe it's nothing, but something to get a, maybe a detail photo on if you were interested. Yeah, 
Yeah, and sometimes it, it could just be the uh, you know the undercoating. You know, it might be a spot where mud's been kicked up. It should look more like you know, kind of like a lighter shade like this. But it is a pretty rough texture, and yeah, it could you know could attract and gather some dirt. But it's yeah, it's just too dark to tell for sure. Um, this hose for the diff breather, um, as the lift gets bigger and bigger the factory hose is not going to be long enough. So you can imagine like right now, and especially given the age of the vehicle, this um, diff breather hose, it comes up from this little nipple on the axle um, and then comes up and it's, you know, mounted onto this, um, you know, frame cross member. And, you know, imagine this axle at like full droop and yeah, it's going to tug that thing right off. This hose should be like all the way down there. And that's, you know, again, due to two things, the, the magnitude and the size of the lift, but also, um, you know, this line not being flexible anymore as well. So yeah, you'd want to pay some attention to that because you definitely don't want that breather to be, you know, open because you can you know easily get water and junk in there. And then it looks like, you know, frame prep wise, it looks like a little bit of, yeah, overspray or something here. So, you know, definitely something was done here, but that was admitted in the listing. So it's not like they're hiding anything. Yeah. A little bit more overspray on this side as well. But nothing, nothing too scary jumping out at me from here. Just more overspray. All right, moving forward a little bit. So this is the front side of the rear diff. Um, yeah, it's got the you know the locker actuator on there. So it is indeed not just the switch. So that's a good sign. <laughs> And you can see where the welds had been painted, you know, just the inconsistency in color here on the frame. So they, they it looks like they did it here and they did it over here as well. And yeah, a little bit more overspray. But a good indication of the overall condition, you know, looking at the rear diff, you know, it didn't look too bad. Um, and then looking at like the skid plate here for the, um, uh, for the fuel tank. And yeah, it looks, you know, it's not crusty. That's what you want to see. All right, moving to the transfer case, that's dry. Uh, sometimes these speedometer um, O-rings leak. Uh, it's a good sign. I don't, I see a little, maybe a little bit of, you know, like grease slinging off these joints. So yeah, make sure those get lubricated. Um, all right, moving to the front. Uh, yep, yeah, more overspray, you can see it. So yeah, somebody did take a rattle can and, and give a little attention to it. Uh, you yeah, know, they did mention POR, maybe it comes in a can, I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit of both. <laughs> So in one of the other videos, I commented how there was like a skid plate like over what the transfer case for the transmission. And that's why it, I don't know, it just didn't look right. It kind of looked like a grate. And you can see it's not here on this 96. So maybe that's something that was like unique to the 93, 94. But yeah, it's not present here. Not that it needs to, but yeah, just <laughs> something of, as I've been looking at these, you know, I've been noting some of the, some of the common things that I'm seeing. And yeah, I think that might've been like a 93, 94 thing. Um, you know, so this listing indicates that it's got like a three and a half inch lift, which is huge, right? It's pretty big. Um, I am seeing, it looks like it's got a little drop for, um, the sway bar here. Um, so normally, you know, the sway bar bushing attaches directly into this kind of like this, I don't know, this T shaped thing. So there's a little bit of like a spacer here. So that's a good sign. Um, it does look like there hasn't been caster correction. These look like the factory arms. There could be some bushings, but my sense is if you look at this axle, it's rotated, it's tipped forward, and that's a result of the lift. Um, you know, I watched the driving videos. I didn't, you know, hear them say anything. I didn't see anything mentioned about drivability issues. Um, I would be interested to see how somebody yeah, thinks it drives yeah, before and after doing that caster correction um, if it's not already done. But just something to, something to keep in mind if you buy this. That looks like a dent in the steering damper. damper. <laughs> right there. But the front differential looks good. You know, under the engine and transmission, it looked look dry. Um, 
you know, so this is the transmission pan. That's the oil pan. Um, not seeing, you know, rear mainsail drips or, you know, back of the valve cover drips. So it looks pretty dry underneath. There's your catalytic converters. There's the front. This is the, um, you know, the power steering, you know, cooler. Those can rust out, or at least some of the, you know, some of the, some parts of it can. And the passenger side of the front diff, the the, the Burfields look good. Uh, there's the steering box. Yeah, I was hoping on this photo, I was hoping to see the the pesky heater hose, but that's yeah, that's a little bit out of the way. mentioned in another video, you know, looking at these pinch welds, it's hard, hard to tell what the condition of this one is. In Tennessee, you would expect maybe something to have been brewing down here, but that looks pretty clean. And there's the Vintag. And then, yeah, it looks like a whole bunch of other Vintags here. Yeah, I don't see one that's obvious that it's the rear tailgate. Um, you know, the lower part, definitely something if I were looking at this that I would yeah, look and see if that, yeah, that lower tailgate's got a, got a Vintag and yeah, maybe see if that bottom part's been repainted. So I think we, you know, settled that the passenger side front fender was either replaced or, or painted, you know, in, in addition to whatever happened on the, you know, on the rear. So I don't know. What do you guys think? This is uh, 240,000 miles. Looks good. Looks kind of cool. Big lift. Cool wheels. Um, I don't think they're gonna get the forty-seven thousand that their previous example did. That one was far cleaner and you know had you know rear bumper and all that stuff. Um, but this is triple locked mileage. You know, so I sold one that was very similar to this. Uh, you know, before the pandemic. This is to give you a little sense for pricing. Um, yeah, I bought it for like forty two fifty out of Washington. Um, you know, put quite a bit of work into it and sold it to a buddy for like, you know, eighty five hundred. I mean, I was way upside down on it. <laughs> but uh um you know, so yeah, eighty eighty five hundred. The biggest differences between yeah, this and that one is that this has been regeared, it's got a front bumper. Other than that, like they're mostly the same. Um you know, so yeah, maybe tack on, you know, at that time, another 1500 to, you know, 2,500 bucks for the bumper winch and the, in the gears. Um, anyway, so yeah, what do you think? 12, 12,000 for this? <laughs> um, yeah. So being realistic, I, I bet this goes up to, I don't know. Yeah, it probably goes up to 21,500. That's my guess. There was one just recently. Um, I don't think it was in I think it was in Florida as well. That other white one, um, that one went for 22,222, but I don't think that one was locked. Um, I don't know. Maybe this goes a little bit more. All right, let's change it. Um, let's go 23,500 and it's got a reserve. I bet it's, you know, somewhere on the order of like 21. All right. Well, that's what I think. It's not perfect. Um, I think it'd be a good good truck to yeah play around with. Uh, it's not a not a beauty queen for sure. It's got you know some little imperfections here and there. Uh, still needs you know a little little work uh, to make it you know to make it nice. Like having the seats go <laughs> forward and back. But uh, yeah, that's what I think. Did I miss anything in the photos? Um, yeah, let me know what you what you saw and yeah what you'd what you'd pay for something like this. All right. Well, thanks very much for, uh, yeah, for checking out the channel again and yeah, hope you have a great day. See ya.